I'm Kathleen Koff. I'm with a company called Blackstone uh, Energy Services. We're a um, well, renewable energy developer, project developer, we EPC, and we also um, have a uh, non-recourse debt fund that we've put together for FIT projects. So not only the construction experience, but also some financing experience, which, um, you know, I've actually only been working in the Ontario solar industry for two months, so I'm not exactly sure why I'm up here, other than perhaps to uh, lower the proportion of Y chromosomes up on stage, but it's really the only thing I can come up with. Uh, but I actually am here wearing two hats. So one is, is mostly as uh, my experience so far in terms of getting these projects financed, which has been a major issue. Um, and the other hat is uh, my experience in this industry actually goes back to my studying it in California. I learned about the industry out there. So much different experience. Um, I kind of took it for granted, clearly. Um, so it's, it's probably a little bit more mature out there. The, the uh, industry's been around a little bit longer. So just sort of interesting comparing that to where Ontario is right now and the growing things we're having right now. Um, and so really the, the points I'm making speak to that. Uh, the first being my California hat, um, access to the grid needs fixing. So obviously Jacob was saying how um, Ontario has been marketing the fact that we're going to be global leaders in the electricity industry. Um, it begs the question, if we can't connect a 10 kilowatt system, is that the canary in the coal mine that this is all just smoke? Uh, what about the smart grid future that we've been promised, not only with distributed generation, but with electric vehicles, with microgrids, with urban, um, uh, sorry, electricity storage? Are those things even possible if we can't connect a 10 kilowatt system somewhere? Um, or is it simply just that we don't have a seat at the table and we're not, and, and we're not getting our voices heard? Um, so, second point there, the grid future. Uh, there's, there's something called the Ontario Smart Grid Forum. It was put together by electricity industry players as well as corporate uh, partners. I believe that there's third, uh, 30 corporate partners, none of which are uh, solar specific. Um, in fact, I don't think any of them are even renewable energy industry specific. Um, so if, if, if this group is putting out yearly publications as to um, suggestions and next steps that the smart grid or that, that the electricity industry needs to take to improve our smart grid, uh, why aren't we there? Um, and so clearly the first thing we need to do is put ourselves in a position where we come to some sort of consensus as to how to pick the person or you know people um, that should sit there, but regardless we need to get somebody there. We need to be at the table, we need to be helping to uh, push along the ideas um, and the processes that are, that are being used to, to develop this market, because really, you can't have one without the other. Um, distributed generation needs two-way flow of electrons and ways to measure them and the information systems to back them up. Uh, so we need the smart grid. So really, regardless of whether it's because the grid isn't uh, robust enough or because we're not there, we need to get somebody there to help drive that process. Um, and that also, that also means uh, not just for the large players, we need somebody there that will represent the entire industry uh, because we all know how important um, solar is when it's when it's near the load, uh, the load used. So, or sorry, the load, um, which usually is in an urban or or farm setting, and it's not going to be the, the huge solar farms. It's going to be the smaller ones. So we really need to make sure that we are uh, utilizing that. Um, the last point, and I'm brief. This is this is just one slide here. Um, Put on my other hat from uh, from the development side. Um, the other thing we've been hearing over the last four weeks, going to a number of the different fit review um, conferences and summits and meetings. Uh, if you're lucky enough to get your OPA contract, how are you going to finance it? How are you actually going to get it built? Um, and it's really hard to talk about pricing. We're going to talk about pricing in a little bit. Uh, it's really hard to talk about pricing when you can't really come up with the hard costs. Um, and so again, we'll be talking about that, but first and foremost, the, the actually admit, the administrative process needs to be streamlined. It needs to uh, be shortened and it needs to be made more affordable. Um, and that way, then at least you're setting some standard that lenders can, can look at and say, okay, that's the risk, we understand it, we get it, now what? And that's where the next question comes in, cost per watt. Um, I know we're very, very eager to try to approach the government with a number that they like, that they'll say, okay, you know what, we can, we can sell this to the, to the ratepayers, to the voters. Uh, but we have to be careful not to skip steps because when you're talking about financing projects, very few people have the equity around to finance 
a 100, 500, 1 megawatt um, system size, that's a, that's a lot of cash up front. And so you're going to need some debt financing. But we all know if anybody's ever tried to go out and finance one of these, there's very few lenders willing to do it. And if they are willing to do it, usually their conditions are such that if you, have to, if you satisfy them, you probably don't need the money anyway. Um, so that's what we have found. We, we have had some luck with lenders uh, with the non-recourse debt, which is probably the way to go with these things. But still, their, their um, debt service coverage ratios are 1.5. If you promise you can come in at, I don't know, 350 a watt, $4 a watt, they're going to need to see how you're going to do that. If, if they get scared if you come in at too low a dollar a watt. So we really need to be careful that when we're setting up our prices, we're not just going for bare bones and saying, we can do it for this. We don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot because at the end of the day, if we can't finance these projects, um, there won't be any projects out there to build anyway. So um, that's just more of a comment in terms of the pricing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just a couple of, of ideas around pretty much the two, the two uh, most consistent issues that's gonna be brought up all the time. Thank you.